Item number two, a rezoning application for 546 Yates Street. And again, before I open the hearing and invite the applicant forward, I will ask Ms. Meyer to explain for council and the public the matters under consideration. This is a rezoning application for the property located at 546 Yates Street. The rezoning application is to permit the retail sale of cannabis through a storefront operation. The use would be limited to a maximum of 800 square meters. The consideration for council tonight is the appropriateness of the new use. Thank you very much. With that, I will invite the applicant forward to make a presentation. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I've prepared written comments for tonight, so I'm going to be reading from them. Not my usual practice, so it might come across a bit halting. Um, dear Mayor Helps and members of the City Council and members of the City staff, my name is Alex Robb. I'm the Director and General Manager of Trees Dispensary located at 546 Yates Street. It's an honour for me to be here today at the first public hearing for, can for rezoning for cannabis-related business in Victoria. I think that given the news today of the federal government tabling the legislation to legalize cannabis by summer of next year, history and probably the other municipalities of this province will view Victoria's actions to get ahead of this issue as very wise. I expect that the new provincial government this summer will look forward and look toward the work that has been done in Victoria as a model to emulate and improve upon province-wide. And as each party and each province scrambles to come up with their plan for legalized marijuana by summer of next year, Victoria City Council will be seen as very wise, sage and perspicacious for its planning and foresight. With that said, this is rezoning for a particular location at 5468 Street and so I will move to that now. Medical cannabis related business and retail is an appropriate use for this property. 5468 is located in core historic designation. I'll quote from the community plan. Core historic buildings of approximately five stories set close to the sidewalk. And I'll switch to the location here and also the frontage and its neighbors and the proposed site plan. I'll quote from the community plan. Core historic buildings of approximately five stories set close to sidewalks with high site coverage continuity of commercial uses at grade with wide sidewalks and tree planting in appropriate locations. Trees Dispensary has been planted at this location since December 15, 2015. Uh, this is uh, one of four locations that Trees Dispensaries operates in the city. When we first leased this property in November of 2015, uh, we did have an intention to be providing ancillary alternative health services. That was why it is such a large location. Um, we have since uh, abandoned those plans in light of the regulations allowing for only one form of business on the location, and we now intend to turn it into our administrative offices. But fundamentally, this is a retail store in a very active retail area. Our store draws in approximately 100 people per day. Many of the members that come to this store live and work in the downtown area. Other people attend this store by way of bus and easy access to disabled parking at the location and the parkade across the street. The storefront is also close to the downtown areas near nearby hotels and we know that we are frequented by medical tourists from the other parts of the country and from other countries that come to our storefront in order to obtain products that they cannot obtain anywhere else. These products include such things as CBD oil and capsules, cannabis suppositories, tinctures, balms and salves, and up until very recently, cannabis edible products, hopefully sometime in the near-term future, VHA will come with a regime up for approving cannabis, and when that happens, we will retail them from here again. Let me tell you a little bit about the company. Uh, Trees began in 2011 by activists Shannon Topfer and Ashley Topfer. They ran Shiva Compassion at 2610 Rock Bay Avenue and also the Vancouver Island Health Advocacy Centre on North Park Avenue and a storefront in Nanaimo under the same name. In early 2015, the company rebranded and merged these storefronts under and the operations of these storefronts and the management of all storefronts under the banner of Trees Dispensary. We are proud to be active members and contributors to the community. Uh, we support local arts and culture. We also support local charities and local initiatives uh, around harm reduction. We've donated to the Pretty Good Not Bad Festival and Fern Fest. We've also run monthly charity drives where we have coin boxes at every till and we match those donations and we donate to 
the Mustard Seed So Far, SPCA, Woodwind Farms, the Good Food Box, the Aboriginal Coalition to End Homelessness. We also directly support initiatives for harm reduction in this community. So we provide space to peers, resources, society, in order that they can do workshops in our Rock Bay store. We also provide a $200 per month budget to AIDS Vancouver Island Victoria so that they can provide a food budget for their drop-ins that they do. We are a medical cannabis dispensary that aims to provide our members with a wide variety of the highest quality, quality of cannabis and cannabis derivative products. Our staff are highly trained to provide advice on what products would work best for different people's ailments and therapeutic use. We provide $3,000 per month of subsidized cannabis products to members that come to us that have severe or terminal illnesses and do not have the financial means to pay for all that they require. We test our products to ensure they are safe and free of contaminants, and we require medical documentation from members and check identification at every purchase and from every person, match it to a membership in our database to ensure that we can never sell to a minor. As many, in this peop and many people in this room can attest, we are also a very good employer. Everybody, pardon me. Everybody that works for trees makes a minimum of $15 per hour, and there's plenty of opportunities for advancement and increased responsibility. We have over 55 employees now, and we work with several contractors and professionals in Victoria. We're proud to be an equal opportunity employer, and our management team and our executive team is 50% women. In this way, our application is also in line with Victoria's official community plan. Uh, to develop regional economic development strategies that focus on finding a way to maintain and enhance the metropolitan core as the economic heart of the region, ensuring that Victoria achieves a minimum share of 20% of the region's employment growth by 2026. Finding ways to, and this as part of the community plan, includes finding ways to include high value clean industry and business in the metropolitan core and major centres and finding ways to reduce poverty. Our company is an example of this kind of high quality uh, and clean business. Our company is also an example uh, to, for uh, compliance to the municipal regulations. We've been inspected by business license inspectors uh, and by law enforcement officers twice, uh, and we have passed with flying colors each time uh, in that particular location. All of our storefronts have been inspected at least once, but that storefront twice. To conclude, I want to thank uh, your Mayor Helps and the City Councillors for moving in this direction. I also think that in the very near-term future, the rest of BC and Canada will see the wisdom of your actions in moving in this direction. After not hearing from the federal government for so long, engaging in a transparent and highly democratic public engagement process to move forward. And I wouldn't be surprised if in a year, maybe a year and a half from now, Prime Minister Trudeau comes here to Victoria and walks inside Tree's Dispensary at 5468 and says, yes, this is exactly what I was talking about. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Council, before I uh, open the uh, public hearing, uh, are there questions? Okay, no questions at this point. Thank you. There may be questions that arise uh, after we hear from members of the public. So this is now an opportunity for members of the public to comment on the proposal for 5468 Street. And again, we ask, uh, as we did on the previous application, that you state your name and your address. Are there any speakers? Yes, come on forward. Welcome. Well, thank you. Uh, good evening, Council. Good evening, Mayor Helps. Uh, my name is Patrick Pupino. I live at uh, 1185 Yates Street. Um, I wear uh, multiple hats within the city of Victoria. Uh, one of those is as a community organizer, and also one is as the uh, project manager for the PHS building A44 Johnson, which is uh, permanent social housing. And I'm just here to give a testimonial to um, the Trees Dispensary as a community member. Um, first and foremost, last summer, when I was ordering, I, organizing some artistic events, um, they very graciously provided their space um, to throw some shows for um, the Ministry of Casual Living, which I was working with at the time, and then in addition some other independent artists around. They were just very benevolent, opening up their doors, uh, and also providing some financial support for us as well, which was fantastic in a, in a time where, as a community organizer, I found it was very, very difficult to book space. Um, super supportive to that. At the same point, um, wearing my other hat as, as um, you know, a social worker uh, and a project manager, they were a huge help uh, transitioning the population from Tent City 
to the building 844 Johnson. Uh, they did that in the way that they had a food truck. And I knew that they had a food truck from having thrown events at uh, their location in Rock Bay. And I just asked them, I'm like, would it be possible to donate this food truck because the building was being renovated at the time? Um, so they graciously did it. Um, also helped um, pay for some improvements to that food truck. And then they let us use it for a month. And that, that food truck itself served over 300 meals a day while we were getting our kitchen renovated. Um, they were absolutely responsive and super grateful and gracious to, uh, to let us do that. And that helped us get our kitchen up online and it was really instrumental in the opening and successful opening of our project at that time. So I just want to say as, you know, as a Victorian resident, as a stakeholder within the community, um, any interaction that I've had with this business has been very positive for me. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, next speaker, please. Welcome. Uh, Madam Mayor, uh, Councillors, my name is Constantinos Tolis of 911 Yates Street. Um, all I can say is uh, medicinal cannabis is a very uh, viable solution to a lot of pharmaceuticals that we have. Um, edibles, I'm not even going to talk about it, but they're very important. Council, this is uh, Professor Teddy. He is also um, a frequent visitor of your chambers and this great city, uh, downtown location. Um, He's actually an aide for, I identify as a Canadian with a disability called bipolar. It means I oscillate between very, very high uh, range of emotion, a very, very low range of emotion. I do this very, very quickly. And at one point, uh, the physicians of Victoria, um, while supervising me, saw fit to give me eight, no less, eight medications, different ones, to manage oh, the highs, the lows, the everything. I'm a father, a business owner, an entrepreneur. Um, I use medicinal cannabis, and the tree dispensary at the Yates Street location has been instrumental in helping keep me grounded, uh, providing me with, with organic, fresh products grown by local growers, as I'm told, uh, by friendly staff um, who educate me every time I go in there. I learn something that trees is, is cool, and I admire them for, for standing up. I mean, if we put a pharmacy there, okay, that distributed Ativan or Adderall or Vicodin, no one would have a problem with it. It's the same thing. Medicinal cannabis helps people. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any further speakers on the application for 5468 Street? Yes, please come forward. It's an open mic, so when you're ready to speak, just come on forward. Excellent. Welcome. Thank you. David McDonald, I live at 834 Johnson Street. Um, I'm not a against this in any way, I'm not against marijuana, but I, I would just like us to uh, speak the truth about this, that uh, um, we have so many ma marijuana stores that it's not medical marijuana, I mean, it's just people getting stoned. And your advantage is taxes. And, Let's tell it that way <laughs> instead of uh, packaging it in, in, in uh, this, uh, this way that we all know that it's not really that way. That's all I had to say. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, any further speakers? Next speaker. Excellent. Welcome. Hi, Mayor and Council. Uh, my name is Rachel Phillips. I'm the Executive Director of Peers Victoria, and I just wanted to similarly comment that Trees um, has been very great to our organization, so many of you may know that we provide services to people in the sex industry um, in Victoria, and we've been doing this for about 20 years. And <clears throat> one of our staple services is um, our night outreach program that operates in the Rock Bay area. And um, so our interaction has been primarily with the, the Rock Bay location, but Trees provides us a classroom space in order to hold monthly or twice a month um, group workshops for people in the outdoor sex industry who access our RV. And at these group workshops, we have um, nurses from Kool-Aid come, we have our police liaisons from Victoria Police come, um, and we have a variety of other sort of health and harm reduction. We do naloxone training. So um, this is a great... Um, 
addition to our night outreach program because we've never had such a we've never had a classroom environment offered to us by a business in the Rock Bay area. In fact, um, I would say to the extent that we have interactions with businesses in the Rock Bay area, it's usually to say they don't want our RV <laughs> around their business. So this was kind of uh, novel and nice to be approached by business to say what can we do to support the services that you offer in the area. And uh, yeah, it's been, it's been a great collaboration for the last couple of years that we've had with them. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, next speaker, please. For a second time, and for oh, an almost third and final time. <laughs> No worries. Welcome. Thank you. Um, I'd just like to say quickly that uh, this is a great industry that's developing and it's giving a lot of people opportunities. And I think that, um, you know, whether it's um, uh, for something severe as uh, cancer or something as minor as um, um, just feeling nauseous or that sort of thing, um, it is a, a developing industry. And uh, the truth is that it's uh, a great uh, Thing to have in Victoria, and I'm happy that it's going in that direction. Oh, sorry, yes, sir. Your name and address, please. Oh, uh, my name is Alistair, and my address is uh, 870 Short Street. Great, in thank you very much. Yeah. All right, are there any further speakers on this application for a first time, second time, and third and final time? I see no further speakers. Council, are there any questions? Yes, Councilor Isaac. Uh, one of the members of the public uh, raised the issue of taxation, and I wonder if our staff can clarify uh, the current regime, I guess starting with uh, business licensing fees and revenues to the city. Uh, are those, uh, in terms of those, the fee levels, are those covered? Are those set at a level to generate revenue for the general revenue for the city, or how do we? How are those fees determined, Mr. Coates? Through Mayor Helps, um, when Council adopted the business regulation bylaw that included the the five thousand dollar annual license fee for uh, storefront cannabis retailers, the the premise on which that fee was based was uh, cost recovery, and that was cost recovery for the full spectrum of city services that go in into into the management of that whole business function. So that's all the way from um, processing applications through to enforcement potential. Um, so because these fees are, are generally based on a cost recovery basis, that was the fee that was estimated for the first round, recognizing in particular that would be a sort of a heavy front end to the to the work involved uh, by city staff to uh, to manage the uh, the establishment of these permits throughout the city. So um, and the, the rezoning applications just anecdotally or, or, un, or perfectly related to uh, Councillor Isaac's question, the same the same uh, approach is in, in place for those as well. This may be a question to our Director of Finance, but in terms of other revenue streams to the city, particularly in terms of taxation, are there any direct revenue streams resulting from this new classification of business? Uh, through Mayor Helps, uh, no, this falls under the regular Class 6 uh, commercial. Thank you very much. Any further questions? Okay, seeing none, I will call the hearing closed and I'll ask Mr. Coates to uh, read for us the bylaw uh, for third reading. And that's for Council to give consideration to third reading to the zoning amendment bylaw number 17-024. Thanks. Moved by Councillor Isaac, uh, seconded by Councillor Loveday. Yes, Councillor Isaac, go ahead. Uh, I can support this. Um, to address the gentleman's concerns, um, uh, there, there will, I think, believe, I, I believe there will be new revenues generated through the legalization of cannabis, but those revenues will accrue to the federal and provincial governments through the, the business income taxes. The city of Victoria doesn't collect an income tax. We levy a property tax. So whether there's a cannabis dispensary in a uh, commercial space or a hairdresser or uh, some kind of a retail store or a restaurant, that property tax is actually fairly stable. There could be variation as buildings are improved, uh, and that valuation is determined by a provincial agency, the BC Assessment Authority. So there will be no uh, revenue windfall for these types of establishments. The reason I can support it is, I guess the first one is I think the last uh, 80 years of prohibition of cannabis have failed. Uh, and it's uh, prevented people both with medical need uh, but also a recreational desire uh, to access a fairly benign substance uh, from accessing that substance. 
Um, prohibition has fueled a black market. It's fueled the growth of organized crime. Um, and it's uh, consumed billions of dollars uh, of resources in terms of policing, prosecution, incarceration, and it's made criminals uh, out of uh, otherwise law-abiding citizens. So I think um, the city of Victoria and Canada, I think, are moving in an appropriate direction. Uh, we've seen that this direction in the United States uh, can be implemented um, uh, with benefits to the community in terms of uh, increasing uh, safety for minors, uh, also increasing uh, awareness and information around the appropriate use of the product and also the quality of the product. Uh, and so I want to commend this council and staff for, I think, pioneering a regulatory approach that is generally in line uh, with the legislation that the Government of Canada introduced today. Uh, and I, I think uh, there's a good chance that this regulatory regime uh, will fit within with whatever pr provincial distribution regime uh, is uh, established in the years ahead. Thank you. Councillor Loveday, anything to add? Okay. Just, uh, <clears throat> I don't have much to add. Um, I'm happy to support this. I, the, while I have some doubts about our process in general, um, we've asked dispensaries to uh, come forward with a set of rules, and this dispensary seems to have uh, followed those rules to a T and uh, been a good member of the upstanding member of the community while they're at it. Um, in response to the issue of tax dollars. This isn't a windfall for the city. I'm hoping that the federal government will uh, give some of the new money that's created through legalization to cities to help us fund the programs that have been down downloaded to municipal municipalities over the last years and decades. So hopefully we'll turn our mind to that lobbying effort uh, at a later date. Thank you. Um, I can also support this. Um, I can guarantee that we didn't coordinate with Mr. Trudeau to make sure that he announced his legislation <laughs> on the same day that we had our first rezoning application, but I could certainly say it does give me great comfort. Uh, it makes it easy to support this. Um, and as Mr. Rob said, and as I said uh, when I was interviewed by the media earlier today, um, I think that the provincial government will probably look to the city of Victoria and Vancouver for what we've done and how it's gone. Uh, and I also think um, that we have something to offer to other municipalities who will struggle uh, over the next year to come up with regulations that will need to meet the federal and provincial guidelines. And uh, we've done that already. Um, so that's a general comment about us. But I think a uh, comment about this application, uh, it does fit um, with the streetscape. It's animated the streetscape. Uh, I think it's an appropriate land use. And I think that Mr. Robb and his team have set the bar very high for uh, applications that come after him. So I wanted to thank him and his team for their earnestness uh, in this and for their leadership uh, in putting this land use uh, proposal together for us. So happy to support it uh, and we'll look forward to what comes next. Uh, Councillor Thornton-Joe. Uh, th thank you. Um, so thank you for the presentation uh, this evening and I have to admit this has been of a concern to me, um, one, because uh, doing it before the federal government has come forward with uh, uh, their decision. And I think we're getting closer, but uh, it, it has been difficult to, to, to be able to do it in this order. That being said, we know that uh, I think for, I don't know how many, 10 or 20 years, we actually have had uh, two cannabis um, uh, retailers or, or clubs in our community for many years who have been assisting uh, people who have needed uh, cannabis for medicinal purposes. And I think we did have a workshop um, or an open house, um, I think a year ago, where we had many people who came and really educated us on, on how important it is, has been uh, for people to access uh, cannabis uh, for health reasons and how they didn't want to be doing it uh, and feeling like a criminal when it's something that they needed uh, for their health. So we are happy that there is some movement today, uh, although not quick enough. Uh, and, and when it comes to this actual land use decision, uh, I do think that we will be moving towards having approval for, for uh, uh, retailers in the city of Victoria. I am concerned about a proliferation of them, and so that is something that we're going to have to deal with, uh, whether it is 
uh, making sure the 200 meters or perhaps we need to uh, extend that low to even further uh, because that is uh, something that we may have to deal with at some point. But I, I do feel that it is a uh, good land use uh, application. I really appreciate the report and the uh, applicant's uh, contribution to the community. Uh, there are other cannabis locations that um, have, have opened up that council has, re has received uh, many complaints uh, about, uh, whether it's odor, whether it's been noise. Uh, but uh, as council lays out for downtown, I have to admit that I haven't received any complaints. And I actually uh, did have one business that commented that there has been no problems and that their storefront is very neat and tidy. The staff is personable and they look after the, the, uh, the exterior of the, of the building as well. Uh, so unless uh, there's any other comments that de defers me in, in this decision, uh, currently I'm willing to support this one. Thank you. Uh, seeing no further comments, I will call the question on third reading. All those in favor? Any opposed? None opposed. Thank you. That carries unanimously. And, uh, <laughs> Thank you, and that bylaw for, uh, you scared the dog, she's running out the door. <laughs> uh, that bylaw for adoption, please. Thanks, moved by Councillor Loveday, seconded by Councillor Isaac. All those in favor, uh, any opposed, thank you. Uh, Council and members of the public, I suggest that we take a five minute recess before we move on to the garden suite uh, applications. Thank you.